Hello and welcome to our service for the sixth Sunday of Easter from St Mary's at Bottisford. My name is Cathy Lindsell. My husband Graham will be speaking later on our Bible passage and it will be read for us today by Brian Crichton from Barkstone. One item of news that you've probably seen on the notices, but just in case, our wonderful canon Judith Wells has taken up a huge challenge. She has agreed to walk 300,000 steps during May to raise funds for Christian aid. If you would like to sponsor her, the details are on the notices, or you can contact her or the church office for more details. She is amassing quite a sum, so won't it be great if we can all add to that? Thank you. Now let us quieten our minds as we come to our service. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, So may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you now and forever. Amen. And now we come to a time of confession. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed for us. Let us therefore rejoice by putting away all malice and evil and confessing our sins with a sincere and true heart. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us, and restore us to the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the God of love bring us back to himself. Forgive us our sins and assure us of his eternal love, in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Collect for the Day. O God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as surpass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love towards you that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises, which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. One of the great pleasures of worship is to sing. Today's hymn is Jesus Lord, We Look to Thee. Please join in where you are at home if you are able to do so.
Now Brian will read today's Bible passage for us, and afterwards Graham will come to speak. Good morning. The reading is taken from John chapter 15, verses 9 to 17, and I'm reading from the New International Version. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you obey my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have obeyed my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that he laid down his life for his friends. You are my friends, if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants, because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends, for everything that I have learned from my father I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Then the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. This is my command. Love each other. Hello. Let's bow our heads to pray. Lord, as we come to look into your word, please help us to understand and learn from this passage now. Amen. Well, today we are looking at love, specifically Jesus' command to love each other. It follows immediately on from the passage about Jesus being the true vine, which Judith spoke about last week. In English, love is an overused word. We say, I love this ice cream, or I love your coat, but we're really saying we like them. Love perhaps is more about people. Even here it seems to cover a multitude of situations. C.S. Lewis wrote a book called Four Loves and he identified four types of love. Romantic love, being in love with another person. Affectionate love, especially in families like between parents and children. Friendship love, Strong bonds between buddies. See it in school children. And God love. We call this agape. Love that exists regardless of changing circumstances. A selfless love. The greatest of the four loves. Very much a Christian virtue. We see romantic love or eros being portrayed a great deal in the arts. But is this what Jesus is talking about here? No, I don't think so. He's talking more about the agape love, which he personified, really. In the Bible passage, Jesus says twice, this is my command, love each other. And he says it in other places, too. He's emphasizing it really strongly. So why did Jesus emphasize it so much? Command it, even. Three possible reasons. First, Jesus was talking to his 11 close disciples. Judas had left. Chapters 13 to 17 of John's Gospel are Jesus' last intimate conversation with them. He tells them how much he loves them and comforts and encourages them. As he has loved them, so they must love each other. Second, he wants them to understand what he has been about, and to carry on the message. He calls them his friends. They are friends because they know their master's business. Jesus has shared everything he has learned from his father with his disciples. He has shown them that his central mission was love. Now he's leaving and must hand over his business to them. As he has loved them, so they must love each other. And third, all through history, we've seen the lack of love. 
Humans naturally seem to want the advantage for themselves. We see wars and disagreements even within the church. When we look at our society, we see a great focus on me, what I want to do and think and believe. Love and forgiveness is Jesus' central message. As Jesus loves us, we must love each other. So if loving each other is so important, what does it actually look like? Fortunately, the Bible tells us quite a lot about what God wants us to do. Matthew's Gospel records Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. Another time, Jesus said, When I was hungry, you gave me something to eat. When I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink, and so on. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians contains the famous passage in chapter 13 describing love. And Paul's letter to the Galatians says that the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, Patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Love seems to be a verb, a doing word. These are all challenging words, and I wonder how we all get on. I have to say, this doesn't come easily to me, and I suspect I may not be alone. Loving each other can be difficult, can't it? Society doesn't get very far either judging by social media. We find some people easy to get along with. Other people just really annoy us. Others we'd really not have anything to do with, just not our sort. Perhaps a bit weird. We're meant to love them? I'm not sure God meant us to be best buddies with everyone. He made each of us after all. But maybe he does want us to treat each other with respect and acknowledge that each person is unique, special and made in the image of God. So how about some self-control and some gentleness, some patience, some kindness, putting their needs before our own, even if people are different to us in some respect. Love overcomes fear, doesn't it? They have exactly the same needs as us. So they say, how about some self-control, some gentleness, some patience and kindness, putting their needs before our own? Perhaps Jesus realised our problem, and that was why he emphasised it so much. When we do support each other, life is so much better. When the chips are really down, people do care, as we've seen throughout this pandemic. Fortunately, Jesus hasn't left us alone. The Holy Spirit helps us and works gently within us, pruning us to help us be more like Jesus. So instead of, I'll be kind to you, so you'll be kind to me, it becomes natural to us for us to have a kind attitude to everyone. Last week, Judith talked about remaining or abiding in God, and God remaining in us. If we remain part of the vine, we will have the vine's juices flowing within us. We will have the vine's leaves and bear the vine's fruit. Jesus' central message is one of love and forgiveness. He wants people to hear and experience this message. As I say, love is a verb, a doing word. Amen. Thank you, Graham. Now we come to our affirmation of faith. We believe in one God, the Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God, the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. And now our prayers. As we turn to God in prayer, 
we pray for our community and the wider world. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for all the progress in this country with tackling COVID. The winter was hard, but we are now seeing the fruits of the sacrifice everyone made. Thank you for the greatly reduced levels of infection everywhere and for the increased freedoms that we are beginning to have. Thank you for most of, most of all for the vaccines and the tremendous programme by the NHS of vaccinating the population. Thank you for the skill too of the scientists in creating the vaccine so quickly. We pray that people will still be careful, yet also will begin to build their confidence to venture out again. Lord, we know that many countries are not so fortunate as our own. We think especially of India, suffering greatly at present. We do pray that help will reach India and that the suffering of so many people will be eased. And we pray for vaccines to reach the poorer countries too that Western governments will be generous in supporting efforts to do this. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, thinking of our own community in the Vale, we pray for those elected on Thursday. We pray that they will be diligent servants of the community and show integrity and righteousness in all they do. We remember our schools, pupils and staff, endeavouring to educate and be educated, in spite of restrictions. Please bless them and keep them safe. On this Rogation Sunday, we pray for our farmers and the crops they grow. Thank you for recent rain, so desperately needed for plants to flourish. Lord, we know that farmers work long hours in all weathers as they care for their crops and livestock. We thank you for their commitment and dedication. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Turning to your church, thank you that it goes around the world. We pray for those who do not have freedom to worship, for the persecuted church and those who must meet in secret. We ask that you will strengthen their faith and trust in you. In our own country, we pray for our church leaders, for our bishops and clergy in the many issues they contend with at present. And here in our benefice, we pray for those in leadership during the vacancy. We ask that you will guide them and lead them by your Holy Spirit. May your people here in the Vale be known by their small acts of kindness, showing your love and sharing your gospel. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for those who we know to be unwell at this present time. We remember before you Sheila Collett, Charlie Hall, Dennis and Joan Kirk, Brian Metcalf, Sam Mottram, Helen Newman, Adam Newton, and Terry Reason. We ask you to uphold them and comfort them by the power of your Spirit, together with any others that we may know individually. We remember too that many thousands are grieving the loss of friends and family during this pandemic. We ask that they may know your grace and peace and trust in your unfailing love. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We bring all our prayers together now in the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. As our service draws to a close, we share the peace. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Shalom, peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. And now a blessing. The love of the Lord Jesus draw us to himself. The power of the Lord Jesus strengthen us in his service. The joy of the Lord Jesus fill our hearts. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son and Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.